So our last topic of this uh, unit, aqueous equilibria, uh, we're going to be studying solubility equilibria. So it turns out that all ionic compounds have a small solubility. So I mean, some have great, uh, very large solubility, but all ionic compounds are soluble in water. Just some are very, very limited, have very limited solubility. So in Gen Chem 1, 1045, we would have just said they're insoluble. Okay. But technically, again, as you delve into the chemistry a little bit deeper, it gets a little bit more complex. All ionic compounds do have a small solubility. So here's silver chloride. So again, in Gen Chem 1, we would have said silver chloride is insoluble because it has such a limited solubility. But it turns out that it does have a small solubility. So if you threw silver chloride into solution, most of it would just sit down at the bottom, okay, as a solid. But a small amount does dissociate, so some silver uh, plus one would dissociate with chloride, and they would be aqueous ions. All right, and it turns out that eventually, uh, this, this silver will bump back into that chloride and make silver chloride crystals again. Okay. And so what happens is that this will set up equilibrium. Not surprising as we're talking about this in a, a unit called aqueous equilibria. We're going to deal with equilibrium. Uh, where that the silver chloride will crystallize at the same rate that they dissociate. So it's constantly going back and forth between dissociating, recrystallizing, dissociating, recrystallizing, and those rates would equal, so we do have an equilibrium system. Silver chloride dissociating into silver and chloride. Now, of course, since it's an equilibrium system, we could have a K, and we call it the KSP for the solubility product constant. Because the soluble ions are, are on the product side. Now the uh, equilibrium constant expression is the same as every other one. It will be the concentration of the products, silver, times chloride all over silver chloride. Oh, it's solid. Oh, good job, Christian. Yes, it's solid, so we don't write solid. Good thing. I would have had to erase that. Oh, yeah, so it's just going to be the products. And it turns out that the KSP for this uh, compound is 1.77 times 10 to the negative tenth. Is that a big number or a small number? Small, that's a small number. So silver chloride has very limited solubility. Another term uh, associated with this solubility equilibria uh, would be the molar solubility. Yes, it would. Uh, it, Yes, you could, yeah. yeah, so they would, and yeah, we could do the, we will do the algebra to figure out how much uh, ions, but yeah, they do uh, dissociate in the stoichiometric ratio, so if that's a balanced chemical equation, every, for every one mole that silver chloride does dissociate, you get one mole of silver ions and one mole of chloride ions, yep, one to one ratio. Now the molar solubility would be um, basically the amount of the ions that are soluble with units of molarity. Molar solubility, hey, that kind of makes sense. All right, so the amount, the concentration of the compound that is soluble with units of molarity.
And it turns out that if you know one, you can calculate, blah, 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 calculate the other. So that's why we're sort of talking about these at the same time. If you know the KSP, you can figure out the molar solubility. So how many moles per liter can dissolve? If you know the molar solubility, you can calculate the KSP. Doesn't that sound exciting? Guys are not as excited as I hope you'd be, but okay, I'm excited. I'll be excited for everyone.